So you should be shopping lenders. As I always say, you should be shopping agents, you should be shopping lenders, you should interview more than one person to help you because you're hiring someone to do a job for you, okay? And that includes a lender. You are paying them to borrow money from them, not just on a monthly basis, but up front by originating the loan, okay? So understanding, one of my first things when you're talking to lenders is ask them what their loan origination costs are. Uh, another key word for this that will kind of trigger an action for them is ask for a line item fee worksheet or a closing cost estimate worksheet or something that details all of your potential closing costs with using that lender, okay? So we'll talk about rate in a minute because everybody's worried about rate. Rate a lot of times is dependent upon what those fees are because lenders have to make money. They do a job too. They provide a service, okay? So understanding what those costs are up front is most important. I can't tell you how many times I get buyers that come to me and they're like, hey, Stacey, we wanna buy a house. I'm like, cool, okay, are we buying it cash? Are we financing? What's the plan here? And they're like, oh, we already got our pre-approval from our local friendly bank. Cool, sounds good. Do you know what your loan origination fees are? No, what are those? Do you know what their closing costs are? No, I have no idea, how do I know that? Okay, ask the lenders for a line item fee worksheet so you can get an idea of what that is because in the current culture of going out and getting a pre-approval prior to finding a property, which is good, that's a good thing to do to make sure you can actually buy what you're looking for versus shopping for something that you can't afford and you don't know you can't afford it yet. Um, it's a good thing, but our lending process has not quite caught up because they're provided, the lenders are required to give you a loan estimate worksheet but a lot of times they can't provide that to you until they have a property address tied to it. And then they have to start a loan file, which if you don't end up buying that house, they have to scratch that and start over. So a lot of lenders will say, hey, you made a loan application, cool. Here is your pre-approval pending these things. And one of those things is a property, okay? So if you have that loan approval, but you don't have a good faith estimate, which is an older term, but it gives them a, a it's a, what we used to use, it's a form we used to use for a line item fee worksheet or closing cost estimate sheet. All of those things. If you don't have that, you can't compare apples to apples. What everybody compares is the rate. And the rate is also, most of the time, not always, but the rate is also not locked in until you have a property under contract. So what happened last spring and happens anytime there's a lot of rate volatility is you get pre-approved and let's say the rates are 6%, okay? You're shopping for a house, shopping for a house, you go on a vacation, you come back, you're shopping for a house. A month has passed, you haven't talked to your lender, and then sure enough, you find a house, you love it, you get it under contract, and the lender's like, okay, cool, now that we have a property under contract, here are the rates. And you're like, yeah, that's 7%. That affects my payment, $400 a month. I can't afford that. So you need to have good communication with your lender, okay? It's another thing we'll talk about in a minute. But anyway, first thing, ask for that line item fee worksheet so you understand what those costs are up front before you go shopping, okay? Pre, if you have a pre-approval letter, say, I need a, fee, a line item fee worksheet for this and realize that that's not gonna be locked in because they don't have a property to lock it into, but at least tell you what those loan origination fees are, okay? Whether it's a percentage of the loan amount, which can flex based on the house, or whether it's a flat fee percentage, all that kind of stuff, okay? So that's going to tie into my second question is about the rate. Don't ask them rate first. That's when people call you up and say, are you the cheapest person for what you do for a living? Chances are no, and if you're not, cool. Because you know the people that are only worried about that are only worried about one thing, which is cost, which can, and that's fine. There are people that are, that is their number one priority. I'm like, cool. So if you're gonna compete and there's four other lenders and yours is onlinebank.com, super cheap, everybody knows it never closes on time, then chances are that's not gonna work in your favor in a competitive market situation, okay? So realize there are more factors, and we'll talk about those in a minute, than just cost, but everyone's gonna shop rate. And rate is important to shop because some lenders are gonna be much more expensive than others. And some lenders won't even be able to give you a loan based on your particular situation. But you can't look at just rate without having the fee worksheet, okay? If you are not planning to refi or sell this property for 15 plus years, then yes, rate is going to be more important. But a lot of times having a slightly higher rate with $5,000 less in closing costs Okay, if that higher rate costs you an extra $50 a month, you can pay for a long time, you know, four or five years for less 
for taking the loan with the higher rates. It's gonna cost you less over the next four to five years. And if you plan on selling the property, refinancing the property, adding somebody to the loan and doing something else, then that will still save you money in the long run. So don't just be focused on the one number, the rate, okay? Understand what those closing costs are and the APR should factor in some of those closing costs for you, okay? So if you're gonna compare just one number, make sure it's an APR, not just a rate, an interest rate, okay? Because the APR will factor in those origination costs a lot of the time. So that's the second thing to ask them about. Third thing is communication. When are they available? How do they communicate and does that work for you? I have some clients that are only available certain hours. I let them know I am not available those hours. Somebody else is, here's the other person they should talk to. Lenders are the same way. If you want to use local super cheap online bank.com or not local, but national super cheap online bank.com or whatever it is, or advertises on the radio a million times or whatever, but they're only available Monday through Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and they break for lunch for an hour and they're only available over the phone and they're two time zones away. How well do you think that's gonna work when you're trying to make an offer at eight o'clock at night and there's four other offers and now this listing agent wants to call your lender to make sure that you've, you've submitted all the documentation, the lender can close on time, they have trust that that client, that seller will get to the closing table because of your lender. So those are all things other people don't think about. They're just like, oh, well, it's a lender. They're all the same, right? False, 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 false. A lot of times you get what you pay for, okay? So depending on the market situation, you can use lenders like that because if you don't have to compete, a seller can't be very picky about who your lender is. If you're the only one offering to buy their house, they're going to be like, well, I don't like it, but that's what I got, right? So and lenders are not a protected class. <laughs> so people are technically allowed to discriminate based on your lender, I would imagine, but I don't know. Anyway, not gonna go there. So understanding when is your lender available? Can you call them on Saturday and say, hey, I have a question, can we get an appraisal waiver on this house? Hey, I have a question, I'm gonna make an offer on this house, what would my payment be? When are they available? Does that work for you? Um, and how do they communicate? If you only like to communicate via Facebook or Instagram message, Make sure your lender is willing to do that. <laughs> if you only like to communicate over the phone and you don't like to do email, make sure your lender is willing to do that and it's available when you need to talk. Ask those types of questions. See how they answer your questions. If you ask questions and they're not giving you an answer or you don't understand their answer, it's only gonna get harder, okay? I was talking to a lender the other day and I actually really liked what he said. He's like, we shoot for boring because boring means everybody knows what's going on, everything's working and nothing hits the fan that needs to get fixed. <laughs> and that's great, so understand that when you're talking to lenders, they are gonna work for you. If you are not happy with how they answer your questions or you're not understanding things, and it's the very beginning, then it's only gonna get more complicated. So communication method is really, 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 really important, okay? Um, and then on those fee worksheets like we talked about, just ask them for those detailed fee worksheets so you can understand the cost and understand how costs can affect rates. Okay, so when I said you're looking, you know, you're shopping rate and you have to compare apples to apples, those fee worksheets will tell you so much, guys, so much. Are you paying loan discount points? Are you, I mean, with builders, when you're shopping builder lenders against other lenders, it becomes even more convoluted because the builder can adjust the sales price. <laughs> um, a lot of times they have that option. So um, to compensate, you know, charging more on the loan side. So there's a lot of things that you need to ask questions and if make sure that your lender is answering the questions to help you understand, to be able to make an educated decision, okay? I am not a licensed lender or loan originator. I am not legally allowed to advise on loan documents. What I have to do is tell my clients and say, hey, this may not be enough information to get the answers you're looking for, and I can't give you the information because I'm not your lender. I don't know what their costs are. You need to go ask them for this. Ask them for this, and I'll use these phrases. And most of the time, that phrase is a line item fee worksheet, okay? or line item closing cost estimate, okay? Now the closing cost estimates, some of those, they're just gonna throw a number on there, like uh, title insurance, they're gonna throw a number on. Okay, well that's gonna change by property, it's gonna change by company, and it may change by who's paying it, because in the state of Colorado, in the contract, in section eight, it talks about who pays for title insurance, okay? So that can flex, but and now those are the pieces you have to look at and say, okay, well, lenders don't set these, so they, they're giving you an estimate to give you an idea of what the costs are gonna be, but they're not quoting you this because it's not their cost to quote. They're just trying to give you an idea of what that might cost. Now, your loan origination charges, discount points, underwriting fees, processing fees, application fees, all of those types of things under loan charges 
are what they're typically going to set. Those are what you need to compare apples to apples. So anyway, long video with a lot of details, but hopefully it gave you some questions to ask your lender or when you're shopping lenders to understand who's going to help you be the most successful in your home buying process, going to help your agent get your offer accepted in a competitive offer situation, and ideally save you some money depending on your situation, okay? So if you've got any nuggets out of this, hit the like button. I would really appreciate that because that means I'm giving you information that's valuable to everybody. So hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. I have lots of good info on here, nitty gritty stuff if you like that. And if you're looking for an amazing agent in the South Metro Denver area, if I do say so myself, please call me. I would love the opportunity for an interview. My goal is to always educate my clients so they can make an informed decision. Not my choice on anything. Your choice, your money. My job is to help you understand what's going to make sense for you so you can make the choice that makes sense. Okay? So anyway, thanks so much for the time. Hopefully this was helpful and have a great day.